Hi, quite a few people asked for a follow-up to my lead flippering video, linked in down below at the end if you haven't uh, seen it, and you should, where I tore down um, one of these dodgy, cheap-ass, bottom-of-the-barrel constant current panel drivers here, and how it was com causing bad flickering on my lead panel lights, and basically it was like 100% ripple on the output and then I compared it with a ripple free or flicker free one granted this one is uh, twice the power 48 watts versus 24 watts but still uh, the cause was of course the lack of any output constant current regulation here, constant current uh, regulation is done from the primary side and not only is there a lack of output filter in here compared to over here but there's also a uh, lack of input filtering which uh, might uh, cause an issue as well. So anyway, let's do a follow-up and see quite a few people wanted to know um, how we could improve something like this or how we could hack it to fix it. Now, I wouldn't recommend hacking these to fix it because there's a lot of uh, design considerations, thermal considerations with your uh, diodes, uh, for example, thermal considerations with your transformer and other uh, things that you really don't want to mess with because these things are cheap i just recommend tossing something like this in the bin and just getting a non-flicker free or a ripple free version of it but anyway um let's just do some experiments with this and uh see what's what now quite a few people commented that uh the input filter cap in quote marks was only 4.7 microfarads and it was only a 50 volt jobby well if it was a 50 volt job and it was directly across uh full wave bridge rectified mains it would be toast. It would explode straight away. Um, but it's not actually across the mains. It's not doing the filtering. It's, well, it's filtering, but only for the controller chip. So here's the capacitor here. Here's the full wave bridge rectified diode after it goes through uh, the common mode choke here. And you can see that it goes through these two series resistors here. So there's nothing in the uh, chip data sheet that says that has like an internal zener to uh, like clamp the voltage or anything like that across there so it's actually uh, getting its power from the uh, feedback coil here which goes through this diode and then to the chip so it's using that after it boots up to uh, regulate uh, the voltage across there which will be uh, the chip maximum is uh, 40 volts in the data sheet so it's it's something under 40 volts so a 50 volt rated cap is fine so that capacitor there has absolutely nothing to do with the input filtering the only uh, input capacitors we have are these two here and they're basically being used as a uh, as part of the common mode uh, choke. <laughs> yeah, there's not much doing. For those playing along at home, both of those are 150 nanofarads. So two of those in parallel. Well, yeah, 300 nanofarads. Not much. <laughs> So a lot of people said, uh, how about we just whack a big, of course, uh, high voltage rated filter cap on the input? Because, yeah, sure enough, um, for the uh, load that we've got, then this amount of input filtering is going to do bugger all. So all your ripple is going to happen on your high side here. Well, OK, well, let's uh, experiment with that. First thing we'll do is actually measure this uh, bridge, the output of the bridge rectifier here and see what our ripple is. And because we're measuring the ungrounded primary side of this instead of the isolated uh, transformer secondary, you'll blow up your oscilloscope if you try and uh, probe this side. So you need a proper high voltage probe available in the EV block store, of course. Anyway, so we'll use uh, this baby and we can safely probe anything on the primary side here. So we'll probe directly across the output of the uh, common mode filter there i've got this uh set to my uh divide by 100 range of course you set your scope to uh divide by 100 as well for your probe and there we go and we can see that we have a maximum peak there of 345 volts there's our ground point there and uh bingo look at that we've got ourselves a full wave rectified Jobby, of course, it's 100 hertz. It's full wave rectified. So there you go. This is at the full uh, 20 watt uh, output load or whatever it is. So yep, that 300 nanofarads, it ain't doing much, is it? But 
The good thing about having a small amount of input capacitance is that you're going to have a good power factor. And this thing, well, this chip anyway, is uh, designed or advertised as having good power factor. And that would be probably a requirement to get that New South Wales government contract. You couldn't have a poor power factor uh, converter, most likely. I'm just guessing. I haven't looked into the, you know, the requirements, legislation, and all that sort of crap. Just over 24 watts there there you go 245 volts here here in the lab it is on the uh, uh near to the uh as high side as you can get anyway 140 milliamps so let's go pf power factor 0.95 that's not too shabby at all any uh bureaucrat's going to be happy with that so that low power factor is going to be a combination of the low input uh, capacitance here plus uh, power factor features of the chip there which are, you know, switches things at uh, the zero point and stuff like that. So if we put our output uh, toroidal so we can measure the current, we can see that our current waveform there at uh, 200 milliamps uh, per division, in fact I've got that AC coupled so we'll change that. To DC and you can see that there you go there's the ground point so it's a hundred percent ripple <laughs> pretty horrible so let's try a few experiments add some input and output caps in various combinations and see if we can improve that without killing our power factor okay let's try some extra output cap not a huge increase but we had a 330 uh, mic 50 volt before we'll add a 470 mic 50 volt before salvaged from another bit of gear of course hope i got the polarity right if not well could go whoop there we go look at that we have improved it a bit it's not going 100 percent to zero now you see it's improved it not by a huge amount but you know and that really hasn't changed our power factor at all and as i mentioned uh thermals on things like your diode here are going to be a potential issue so i've removed the uh output filter cap i've had it been had it running for a bit let's get the thermal camera on there what do you know the hot spot is that diode and we're talking yep 70 74 and rising maybe i haven't left it on there long enough but it's yeah it's getting up there let's call it 74. oh let's go overboard 2200 mic 63 volts thank you very much and bingo there is our current waveform sorry i've taken off the voltage probes but you can see it's uh much further away from ground now so yeah it's not what is it 50 percent ripple now instead of 100 percent and by the way we're still drawing 24 watts there and let's have a look at our diode our little diode D there she's about the same so there you go there's no more stress on that diode um transformer is not a trust me it's really not hugely hotter so huge amount of out in increased uh, output capacitance there practically an order of magnitude increase and pretty much uh, overkill like you know that is as <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't make it that big on a 24 watt uh, panel like this and it's still got that's still like 50 odd percent that's that's terrible Muriel and no surprises for guessing that hasn't changed our power factor or our input voltage waveform either it's so obviously there's only a limited amount you can do by uh, fixing the output uh, capacitance like this because we've got no secondary side conversion over here nothing it's all done via the primary side and and we've got bugger all input uh, capacitance so let's add some input in capacitance over here and see what's what once again, we're going an order of magnitude. You've got to love orders of magnitude in engineering. Nippon Chemicon for the win. Once again, salvaged uh, from an old board. And you should always have like scrap boards lying around so that you can salvage parts like this because not everyone's going to keep like a component bin full of various uh, size and rating uh, caps like this, especially on uh, the mains input side, unless you're working on that sort of stuff daily. But okay, I found a uh, hole to put that into. Unfortunately, the pitch wasn't correct and there's not enough Enough, uh, clearance around there let's put a jumper over definitely got that correct that's a negative on the bridge rectifier and i've confirmed that with the <laughs> voltmeter as well that's going to the negative of the cap don't want to screw the pooch on that one anyway let's power that up and give her a bowl oh and by the way i've disconnected the output cap again so we're in the original configuration just adding uh, th uh 33 mic 
um, input capacitance. And ta-da! Look at that! That fixed it like a winner winner chicken dinner. <laughs> no worries whatsoever. And our output ripple is pretty decent. And look at our input voltage. Look at that. There's not, you know, there's a bit of ripple on that, but no worries. You know how it was going almost down to ground before because there was only 330 nanofarads there. So the input capacitance is the, well, it fixes the problem. And our output ripple is really quite nice, even with the original uh was it 330 microfarad output cap so we're still drawing our 24 watts but our power factor uh wah, 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 wah. thanks for playing it's dropped down to 0.58 that is a horrible horrible power factor so really from the utility you're drawing almost double the amount of uh current through the network copper even if you're not being charged for it i've done a whole video on that linked in at the end and down below if i remember to do it um that's really bad and the if the government knew about that uh, well they probably wouldn't approve so you might not be able to sell that uh with a power factor of 0.58 or you know under 0.6 that's pretty terrible compared to what 0.95 or whatever we had before so yeah that fixes our flicker problem essentially and i turned off my studio lights and as you can see can't get any pick up any real flicker on this anymore whereas if i look at the lights up there they're the existing ones i'll switch my main lights on there you go you can see those flicker now this one ain't because we're getting you know not much ripple on that it, it is still if you had decent measurement uh, gear you know you could measure the uh flicker on that uh probably but you know it's it's basically fixed it's low ripple once again, the output uh, bridge rectifier there, 75. The, uh, the main switch in chippy down in there, even though it's on the back side of the board. Bridge rectifier there. Neither, we're talking about the center spot there. It's neither here nor there. And our tranny under the bottom, it's doing all right. So really, uh, the only effect of uh, increasing the input filter cap is not only uh, you make it physically uh, larger, of course, more expensive increases your bomb cost, but it kills your power factor and that could kill your lucrative government contract. And if you think that the uh, flicker free version uh, solves the problem by input capacitance, nope, it doesn't. There you go. It's a little piddly. You can barely see it, but 4.7 microfarad, 400 volt there. It's solving it because it actually does proper secondary side current regulation over here. Quite a significant topological differences uh, between these, this one and this cheap ass jobby. And if you want to know what the power factor of uh, this particular one is, it's even better than the other one. 0.974. Thank you very much. Now, of course, we could try and correct this power factor correction problem by, uh, by passive means uh, using some inductors, uh, for example, but it's kind of like polishing a turd pretty much because we don't know uh the what impact this these mods have had to the efficiency of something like this we saw that potentially the uh main switching dip 8 ic is potentially getting hotter there's internal losses in the switching transistor and stuff don't know what's going on there you'd have to measure the whole performance you'd have to characterize the whole thing and uh, it, it's just no you are polishing a turd and you could do it as an academic exercise of course but as a practical solution no it's just easier to go out and buy a proper flicker free version now i actually found this uh ti part which is a tps92314 for those playing along at home and it does look to be a near identical part to the onbright one in fact the look at the typical application schematic it's practically identical and it's got all the same stuff offline primary side sensing controller but this one says uh with uh, PFC or power factor correction. Now, uh, with inherent in it, when they have to use the word inherent PFC, it means it's it it kind of does PFC like our existing design here. It actually had good power factor correction because it, it does inherently do that, but at the expense. But because it's a single stage converter, it's essentially going to have that trade off limitation between your output ripple current and your uh, power factor correction. So you know it, it's not that great so if it, but this part the good thing about this is that oh look there's a few extra things in here see it's got some additional clamping across the primary side uh transformer tap here it's got a uh zena diode clamped but it's essentially the same we've got our auxiliary wind in here and just a single 
uh, half wave rectifier output. And it does uh, exactly the same thing. It's got all the same stuff. It's got quasi resonant switching and, you know, all the sort of stuff that the uh, Onbright one says. And if we have a look, and it does actually have a complete schematic down here, uh, well, t you know, a complete application example uh, schematic. We've got an, uh, some additional uh, filtering in here, but apart from that, that looks pretty much the same. Here's the compensation capacitor down here, and that value there does the, well, or attempts to do the power factor correction. So maybe we could tweak something like that on our Onbright uh, design, perhaps, but uh, we don't have the relevant data sheet, doesn't have the relevant information on that. And it's given us uh, typical output uh, capacitance figures as well. Once again, uh, input capacitance is only 47 nanofarads. And the good th other good thing is that it lets us calculate the output capacitance and ripple. So it gives you the example here of uh, for 30% ripple current, which is a heck of a lot, right? And you still need 480, you know, 470 microfarads uh, on the output. And that still gives you 30% ripple current. So yeah, you get your nice power factor correction, but your ripple, it sucks. So really, if you want to do this properly, you need a two-stage converter instead of a single-stage converter, and you might get something, this is maybe a bit overkill, you can get low-cost ones in this, but this is a, the LM3450, for example, is a lead driver with active power factor correction. None of this inherent power factor correction rummish, and, and you can do uh, phase dimming, so you can do like phase control uh, dimming of the thing as well, and uh, you can implement it as a single-stage or a two-stage design here and here's the basically this is what we're doing here here's our secondary lead driver and that is essentially what I said of having the constant current regulation on the secondary side you're doing it as a second stage and this does active power factor correction you'll notice here's the main switching FET down here and they've got another switching FET here that is doing some active power factor correction. So this is the puppy you want if you want to do it properly. But of course, it's much higher cost than the simple single stage solution designs. Internal block diagram, pretty comprehensive and complicated. We won't go into the details. This is not uh, the place to do it. But you can actually implement it, as I said, as a just a single, you know, this typical uh, single stage design, typical flyback application like that. And we won't get into power factor correction because I've done that in another video. But suffice it to say, this one uses active power factor correction. And here you go, they specifically tell you single stage design, low cost downlights, or you want the high end downlight, you go for the two stage design, which is more expensive. And here's the two stage lead driver. Look at this, it's even got soft start. Fantastic. We've got uh, EMI filter up here, very nice. And then we've got all the active uh, power factor correction and drive. We've got control feedback. And then we've got the second stage lead driver here. They're using, and of course they're pushing their own parts in LM3409, uh, but you can use any constant current uh, lead driver you like. And that just inherently gets rid of all the ripple and it solves the problem. And here's your opto couple of feedback here, but that's expensive. As uh, it said in the Onbright one, I think you need the opto coupler, you need an LMV431 typically, and then you need to buy the... Uh, constant current lead driver and well there, there's some extra stuff for dimming if you're doing that but all of that adds significant cost as well as the active uh, power factor correction uh, stuff adds very significant cost you could easily triple your bomb cost or something like that by uh, adding in these parts and by the way this schematic might look a bit weird it might look like all this stuff is physically on the primary side but it's not you will notice v out here is connected to V out here, which is on the isolated side of the transformer. So they just didn't have a landscape format schematic. So and that, that's just a good, well, a poor example of laying out a schematic. Well, you, you kind of, I, I would have like physically put some dashes down here to sort of like, you know, show that it's primary side, secondary side. I would have added that, those uh, notes to the schematic there. But anyway, yeah, two stage output current regulation. So as for our on-bright turd here, well, you know, it's, it's probably equivalent to that uh, TI uh, part. You're not going to get any better. Once again, there is that compensation cap in there. So you could try and experiment with that. And they've got some detail on that. The duration of the turn-on period, 
T on is generated by comparing the internal fixed sawtooth wave with the voltage on the uh, comp pin. During steady state operation, voltage on the comp pin V comp is slowly varying due to a large external capacitor connected to the comp pin. Therefore, the turn on time T on is constant in a flyback topology, which is what we've got. Uh, constant turn on time and quasi resonant operation provide higher power factor and low THD. Yeah, okay. How do we calculate that? <laughs> <laughs> they don't tell you. No, there's just, there's there's nothing in here. There's nothing in here to tell you how to calculate that compensation capacitor, unlike the TI document. So, you know, <laughs> what are you supposed to do? Like, yeah, you can just suck it and see experimentation. Who cares? I'm, I'm not going to polish this turd. It, <laughs> it's done. And just, like, get a proper flicker-free one. Yeah, you can probably shoehorn this thing to work. But no, I, I, I don't recommend it. As I said, you'd probably have to do full characterization. Again, I wouldn't want to put these things up, you know, a dozen of these things up in my roof that are hacked and just, oh, it's, it measures okay in the bench, but when you put it up on the roof and it overheats and does what it, no. No thanks. It, no. No, just don't do it. So I hope you liked this uh, relatively quick second video looking at this again. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, you can discuss it down below in the comments or over on the EV blog forum. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.